All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to welcome Shannon Tipton, who is in Chicago. How are you doing, Shannon? I'm doing great. How about you? I uh, couldn't, couldn't, if I was doing any better, it'd be illegal. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and uh, Shannon is the chief learning uh, rebel with over 15 years corporate learning leadership experience. She uses blended learning techniques and informal learning process to successfully develop learning and development departments and training startups in North America, Europe, and Korea. Excellent. Yes. And and what we're going to talk about today is modernizing learning to create business impact. Um, so let's get let's get uh, let's get straight into it, Shannon. Uh, why do we need to modernize learning techniques? Well, that's a big question. Why do we need to modernize learning techniques? Well, because workplace learning really evolved from the industrial age. You know, when we had a bunch mm -hmm. of people sitting in the same place, all in little rows, and really there wasn't a whole lot of development, professional development going on. And so subsequently it was equated to when you went to school. So, Corporate learning looks like if you go to university, right? Or if you're in high school or college, it all looks the same. And it really doesn't work the same. Your audience is not sitting in a classroom with, you know, pencils at the ready, ready to take notes about your lecture. This is not how workplace learning works. When you think about adult learning, adults want to take information. They want it to be relevant. They wanted to make them smarter, better, faster than they were yesterday. And sitting in that classroom environment as it was modeled after that industrial age learning just isn't going to work today. People just want to be able to get up and do the thing that they're supposed to do and do it well. So it's time to really rethink how we produce workplace learning. Um, yeah, I think there's there's some great points there, and I do a bit, a bit of background in this too. So um, it's interesting, but you're 100 percent correct. Is that um, most of the learning? Um, I would say not even industrial. I think it goes back to Greek, um, you know, to Socrates <laughs> and those oh, like teaching oh, people really? sitting around in a circle. Yeah. So we haven't we haven't evolved that much. Uh, but the other thing too is uh, part of the issue, I think, uh, and I'd love to get your insight on this, is that learning and development or training or whatever in most organizations is kind of relegated to it's somewhere there with HR and not, not really given the resources or respect that it deserves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, it, it does break off. There are some L&D or learning and development departments mm -hmm. which work through the HR function. There are others that work through operations. There are others that work through sales. But I am of the um, I am of the opinion that L and D does deserve to have its own space with its own agenda to work with the business because HR has its own agenda, right? Primarily HR is to take care of comps, benefit, yeah. mitigate risk, et cetera. So it has its own set of priorities and its own agenda versus learning and development, which is all about talent development. It's all about helping people grow and learn and work within organizations. So subsequently then, when we don't elevate it to where it has equal footing with operations and HR, then it becomes an afterthought. And when it's treated as an afterthought, we can't be shocked and amazed when people don't take learning seriously. Yeah, no, 100%. And I remember one time somebody saying, uh, back in the day, somebody saying, well, if I invest in all this training on my people, you know, they'll, what happens if they leave and go to other companies? And our answer used to always be, well, yeah, but... If you don't, if you don't train them and they stay, okay, then what? Right? <laughs> then what? <laughs> then you're left with you're left with the whole talent base with no talent. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so talk to me a little bit about how you the work you have done to evolve this and where where corporate training needs to go to and 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 uh, corporate learning where where does it need to go to? Because we live in this strange world now, where I think somebody told me that we have at least four, if touching on five generations in the workplace, which is insane mm -hmm. if you think about it. Yeah. All with all with very different learning styles and experiences. 
Well, yes, absolutely. And I think what needs to occur is thinking about, first off, learning and development, they will call the people that are in their classrooms or in their workshops, you know, they call them learners. And to start off, Learning Rebels just calls them humans. Humans just <laughs> want to learn. Humans just want to do better. So it's not about putting them into this box that says they're learners. They're really just humans that want to do better. And it's not about putting people in another box, which says that they have learning styles. And subsequently, we must do audio and kinesthetic and video and all those other things, because we know that learning styles really has subsequently been debunked from learning mm -hmm. science, right? So now, now what do we do? Now it's about thinking about content for and context. And this is where Learning Rebels really shine. So what we do here is we think about what does the context, meaning where does the content fit into the organization and what is best for that content? So if you're thinking about uh, sales enablement, for example, yeah. and you're thinking about negotiation skills, let's just say, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what a person's learning style is. What matters is whether or not they can negotiate the deal at the end of the day. So how does that content then fit within a person's day-to-day -day work? Does that mean then that it's not a class. Maybe it's a um, internal podcast that's dedicated to nothing but negotiation tips and interviews with salespeople who have done extraordinarily well. Or maybe it's a um, internal Slack workspace that has nothing but successful tips and tricks about how to negotiate the best deal, right? So it's not necessarily always about the classroom. It's about getting resources to people when they need it to when they need it the most and when their business needs them to have it. So this is where Learning Rebels really takes this type of information and we take your curriculum and we look at it with fresh eyes and we think about the different paths your curriculum can take. And does it really benefit who the end user is going to be and how they are going to use it and how the business needs them to use it? So this is the direction that it's not just what our business does, but I do believe that this is the direction that workplace learning yeah. needs to take in order to become sustainable in the future or else we're going to be replaced. We're going to be replaced by something else. Right. Yeah. Um, no, I totally agree. And I think w what you're outlining there is something, yeah, I, I totally agree with you on. And that's like giving people what they need at the point of impact. Right. Mm -hmm. There's no point in taking people into a classroom for three days for negotiations training and then expecting them four months later to remember that stuff and apply exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and we worked with a group of medical sales. And part of their problem was how do we get medical devices into the hands of our salespeople and have them actually be able to hit the ground running with higher impact? And traditionally what happens is you bring all of your salespeople in, they sit in a classroom, they listen to the specs and the features and benefits and they see a demo and they get to practice with it. And then they go off and maybe five or six months later, they might get final FDA approval for that device. Yeah. Then we have to bring everybody back yeah, yeah, and yeah. do the whole thing all over again. And it becomes very time consuming. And it really, the as you know, the longer that you take salespeople off of their routes, the more money it costs. And it doesn't yeah, only yeah. cost the business money, but it costs the salespeople money too, right? So if they're not making sales, they're not making commissions. So you yep. want to be able to get that information directly to them. And in this case, what we did is we used a series of chat bots to bring information to them. But that aside, the important thing is, as you said, is bringing that learning impact, that information directly to the person rather than bringing the person to the train. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. Because you remember we, we used to, I don't know if they still do, we used to have like, we have formal training. Then we have informal training. And the reality is the informal training is really what people need right now, the point of impact. So now it's just learning. Now it's just learning, right. It's not um, 
you've got micro learning, you got social learning, you got informal yeah. learning, you've got formal learning, you got virtual learning, you've got all, you know, all these things tagged as learning. And I'm completely with you. It's all just learning. But what we have are different modalities that we can yeah. bring out of our toolbox. And again, which modality is best for the person, best for the business and best supports the content? Yeah, no, I, I 100% because the other thing, too, is let's face it, the more formal you make it and that uh, the more it starts to feel like school and, you know maybe yeah and and who knows what your experience of school was like i mean we when i ran it like right. a, a consult a, a international uh, sales consulting service i mean you know we bring people into class or you know three-day trainings and all of that and you definitely see some people who this was the last place they wanted to be right. and it wasn't necessarily about the content it was just about the experience they hated the right. idea of being back in a so-called classroom right absolutely I completely agree with you. And I think that that just goes to show that when we do bring people into the classroom, we have to do it for reason. Mm -hmm. And this is where the concept of, you know, flipped classrooms, you know, come into play where what lectures can we send or what uh, knowledge can we send to people before mm -hmm. they come to the classroom? Yeah. And let's take sales again, because sales is a great example of this. So can we send them the features and benefits spec, right? Can we sell them all, send them all the marketing materials? Can we send them all of the um, necessary background information? Here's the video, here are the downloads, et cetera, et cetera. Have them look at that, have them watch it, what have you. Then bring them into the class for a truncated period of time and then let them practice with it. Now they have yes. the knowledge. Now it's about impact and putting it into action. And so now it's less classroom like and it's more experiential. So the mm -hmm. idea of flipping the classroom and really doing more if you have to bring them together, again, saving time and money and making the learning more relevant. No, I, I agree with you because that's what we used to experience that a lot was the role plays. That's when people really came alive. That's what they really mm -hmm. wanted to do. They wanted to, and yeah, you know, we would have you know salespeople and play customers and all that kind of stuff. And right. it really that that's when you get the value of it. So I love that idea. I hadn't heard that term, the flipped classroom. I've been like flipped off the classroom, but never heard of the flipped <laughs> classroom. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've been called worse. <laughs> um, um, so uh, so here, here's another here's another challenge uh, again. I mean, you can make all of this available. Right. Um, but there has to be some driver. Right. You have to have the buy in. Right. You have to have the executive sponsorship, all of that, because mm -hmm. if if you're if, if people are not being if it's not being reinforced from the top that you have this stuff, here's this stuff, it's there to help you use it. There's no excuses. Um, you know, then, then you will get some people to use it, but you won't get the majority. So it needs that. That was always the thing is like, you mm -hmm. need to have the people at the top continue to reinforce how much learning is important. Right. And it goes back to really connecting learning to business impact. And this is yes. where you get management buy-in. So if you do not have your learning connected to some sort of business goal, then why are you doing it? Mm -hmm. That's my, that's always my big question. And so now that we have it connected to a business goal, where if we are successful, some sort of business matrix will be impacted, then you can get manager buy-in. But here's the thing as well is oftentimes we bring managers in too late in the process. Yes. So learning in their world will create a classroom or what have you, and they do it in a vacuum, or maybe they yep. bring in a few subject matter experts and they bring in a few end users and get their opinions, but nobody's reaching out to the management and asking management whether or not the learning follow-up or if the reinforcement is sustainable for them. Mm -hmm. And if not, how can we make it sustainable for you? How can we make your life easier to keep your people informed and to keep their growth with forward momentum? And so we don't yeah. bring them in soon enough in the process. And then what happens at the end is that we get that oh so familiar, 
I don't care what they taught you in that cleaning training class. This is how <laughs> we do it here. Right. <laughs> and that's because we didn't get the buy in deep enough, rich enough, soon enough. Yeah. And, and the point is, I mean, as you said, these are all humans. So if your managers are not feeling confident that they know the content that they know uh, the stuff well of course of course they're going to push back because you know they're they're going to feel insecure when right so they're not going to have the people yeah so i i i totally i totally agree with you i think that is always a big mistake and we don't pay enough attention we often to to the managers mm -hmm. yep absolutely yeah so um so what have you seen what have you seen starting to work really well now i mean where when you what types of learning I mean, you mentioned even things like you know podcasting on stuff i mean there's so many different things you can do and where have you seen with some of your customers you don't have to name them but where have you seen real success and what was uh and what was the driver of it real success uh when it comes to reimagining their uh learning yeah absolutely and yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. uh uh, for example, I did have a client who had to really think differently about the way they went about it um, and, and trying not to give away too much is that sure. the um, they were responsible for people who were coming out of drug addiction, coming out of being recently incarcerated. And now we want to connect this particular group of people back to life, you know, mm -hmm. So they 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 obviously have life struggles. So now, how do we bring life to them and make them feel as though they are an important piece of the community, that they're a valued piece of the community? How do we make those connections? Well, it's certainly not putting them into a classroom. You know <laughs> yeah. that that's not going to work. You know, so uh, so how do we go about doing that? Yeah. So what we did with them is that we created. Uh, a mobile app that for those who did have access to smartphone technology, they were able to access very small learning lessons that helped them navigate uh, interviewing, that helped them answer questions about uh, their particular location within the community, that helped them to understand finances better, you know, because things have for a lot of them, things have changed quite a bit, sure. you know, so how do they understand finances? So we created this mobile app where they could go in and watch a two to three minute video or listen to a little audio piece dependent on the topic that they were in. And then they also had these kiosks in where they were staying. And we developed coaches and mentors within each location to help them answer those questions and to access all of these little micro learning elements, you know? And so rather than trying to figure out, oh, gee, what sort of e-learning monstrosity can we <laughs> create for these people? Let's really make it so that it's accessible and forget learning language. So one of the biggest things we had to do was to throw away all of the corporate language throw away all of the learning language. We really had to learn a new vocabulary so that way we could reach um, this particular audience where they were at, you know, so you didn't lose them. So it's not as though um, I'm saying that we dumbed anything down. That's not the case at all. We just wanted to be able to speak and have them understand on the fly without them having to go, oh, gee, that was a $5 word. Um, what, what did that mean? And yeah. we just really wanted to connect with their uh, challenges and struggles and put this in their hands so that they could succeed. Yeah, that sounds like a great solution. And you just kind of uh, reminded me of something. Now, I do think that learning and development, uh, I mean, they have not done themselves some favors over the years. I don't think by by exactly what you said by adopting L and D language and you know making everything you know very complicated or making it sound very complicated and very right. and, and kind of switching switching people off. Um, what you just described there. I mean, if you think of that in a in a sales context, my goodness, who wouldn't want to have if I have my negotiations reminder on my phone, listen to it for five minutes or two minutes before I go right. into a negotiation? I mean, that kind of stuff is really valuable. And we're not talking about the pedagogy 
<laughs> right, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and this is why I am a huge proponent, and I say podcasts. I really believe internal podcasts are the way to go with a lot of salespeople because you think salespeople are on the go. Go, 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 go. They're in their cars, they're in a train, they're in treadmills, they're on airplanes. Mm -hmm. And so they're not going to have the time to watch a video, even if it's three minutes long. But yeah. what we can do is we can get in their ears. So if we can get mm -hmm. in their ears, then that's one step forward. Yeah, no, I, I love that. I think that I think that's fantastic. And uh, listen, this is this has been fantastic, Shannon. Um, and all of Shannon's information obviously is going to be below this video. But I love I love what you're doing. Love your logo, by the way. Um, Thank you. Being a mar I'm a martial artist and I do some boxing as well. So that's why I just <laughs> love to see the boxing gloves. And uh, uh, and this was a great interview. Um, I think I bored your dog, though, because he got up on the chair and went to sleep. <laughs> That's his chair. That's his chair. Yeah. Whenever I whenever I do these things. Wow, like, it was, the minute I started talking, he just climbed up there and went to sleep. I thought, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Um, listen, Shannon, before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Sure. Uh, so I am based in the Chicagoland area, Shannon Tipton, and I am the owner of Learning Rebels. And what we do is we help you reimagine what learning could be within your organizations to help you connect learning that matters to business impact. And that's what we do in short. And you can find me at learningrebels.com. You can also find me on you know, LinkedIn, on Twitter, on all of the places you can find me. So I encourage people to uh, go to the website and take a look around or just connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to talk to you there. Absolutely. And before you go, you got to introduce your dog. Oh, that's Jack. That Jack's in the background there. That's my that's my little guy. And I also have another little guy who sleeps at my feet. But oh, uh, they're, they're they're very much a part of the process. You got to have some, you know, collaborators. You absolutely do. I love it. Well, listen, thanks again, Shannon. Fantastic. Uh, I'll see you all again for an interview, another interview very soon. Thank you. I hope so. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it.